Hey, it's Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com. Got a Photoshop tutorial for you today. We're going to talk about converting video to animated uh, GIF files. You can use this to create memes. You can just use it in general because it's kind of cool. Um, you know, if you want to create a meme from some iconic clip from a movie, obtain a clip of that movie, uh, rip it from somewhere for legal reasons, purchase the movie and get proper permission, you know, all that good stuff. Um, and you'll be able to overlay text or whatever you want in Photoshop and export a very shareable .gif file, gif, gif, call it whatever you want, I don't care. Uh, before we get going though, we've got a sponsor for this month. It's graphicstock.com. April of 2016 is Graphicstock's Creative Rewards Month. Um, they're going to have surprise new product features that are going to be rolled out this month that I don't even think they've let me know what they are. Um, but they've got a lot of great stuff. You can see here I've searched for ship. I've got all these different images. They've got photos, illustrations, vectors, over 300,000 of them. They're royalty free. You have access to all of them when you purchase a subscription uh, to graphicstock.com. Now typically a subscription is $49 a month, but for new users in the month of April, you can get six months of subscription for just $39. So I urge you to check it out. There's a link in the description to this video. Let's talk about this converting video to an animation in Photoshop feature. We're gonna go file, import, and we're gonna choose video frames to layers. Do you ever know that was there? Me neither. Uh, we can't, I actually didn't know it was there, but you know what I'm saying. All right, we're gonna find a video file. I have this uh, clip I took of the USS New Jersey. It's a battleship uh, down on the Delaware River outside of Philadelphia. And I can import videos to layers. I can choose to just import the entire, it's like, I think it's 33 seconds or something. It's, it's, it's not a long clip, but it's not really short either. And it's 1080p as far as resolution is concerned. I'm going to choose use selected range. And we're going to use our little uh, you know, scrubber handle here to trim down to where we want. Now, I adjusted, you can see the exposure of the camera right around here. So I would properly expose um, and get, you know, detail in the clouds in the sky. So I'm going to trim it down to about right there. That's probably good. And I'll nip away just the end because usually the end is kind of herky jerky as you sort of move the video camera away and simultaneously stop recording. You can also just limit it to a certain number of frames if you want. And you can choose to either just, if, if we can turn this into an animation in Photoshop, or if we uncheck this, we can literally just import all the frames of video in this range as individual layers in Photoshop. So if this was shot at, you know, 24 or 30 frames per second and we have, you know, 10 seconds of footage, we can have, you know, 240 or 300 layers about to be imported um, into a new Photoshop document here. I'm going to choose to make a frame animation. We're going to hit OK. Give it a second here and it's going to cut that video file uh, to pieces. And you can see, sure enough, we've got a whole load of layers, 209 layers to be exact. And only one of them is turned on. If we go window timeline, it's going to bring up our animation timeline. And sure enough, we have an animation. It's pretty cool. So we've got all of this going on here. It's automatically animated this video. So essentially it's still video. So what's the point? Well, we're not really going to talk about all the different animation features and some of the other features that appear um, in Photoshop when you're working with video and animations. But all I'm going to do is create some text here that just says USS uh, New Jersey. There we go. And then I'm going to move this text over to sort of the middle and just drop it there. I'm going to leave it right on top. Uh, the next thing we can do, well, we're not going to resize it yet because let's just say we want to save this out as a new video clip now. We can go File, Export, Render Video. Now, when I do this, I can first give it a file name. We're just going to say uh, Ship1 or something. And I'm going to save it right onto my desktop. That's good. You can choose to select, it, uh, select and save it in a different folder. I'm going to save using Adobe Media Encoder, not Photoshop Image Sequence. I don't want to do that. I want to export like a, a, a true blue video file here. And I'm going to go with the H.264 codec. It's just kind of the plug and play in QuickTime. Even though you have the QuickTime option, um, sometimes this is like a QuickTime file that still has to be like converted to a playable QuickTime thing or something. I'm not a video codec expert. Somebody can educate me in the comments. Feel free to do it. You also have Adobe's presets here. Uh, we've got a, a, a specific YouTube HD option, which is great. There's also a Vimeo HD option, which is great. 29.97 frames. That's the frames per second. So about 30 frames per second. That's what it is. I'm going to go with the YouTube HD 30 frame per second deal and I'm going to leave everything else kind of as the default option here. And I'm going to choose render. When I do that, it's going to take a, you know, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds or something and export this video. And then once the, the little dialogue goes away, we have a video. So if I just jump to my desktop, sure enough, I've got ship1.mp4. If I double click, it's going to open up, you guessed it, the QuickTime player. And we can see here, let me just kind of shrink this down a little bit if I can. There we go. I can shrink it down and I can go ahead and play it. And 
you know, we've got our video. We've got the text that we placed on it in Photoshop, and we've got our video. Is it the best way to edit video? Not by a long shot, but it's doable. I'm going to close the QuickTime player. Let's check out another uh, way you can export this. We can also go File, Export, and choose Save for Web Legacy. Um, but before I do that, actually, I'm just remembering now, I want to go Image, Image Size, and cut the size of this image way down. Maybe we'll make it like 450 pixels wide. Hit OK. Uh, just because this animated file that I want to save out, I want it to export, you know, reasonably quickly, and I don't want somebody to have to load a massive animation. We're going to go File, Export, Save for Web, Legacy. And the Save for Web, the old Save for Web, or it's not really old, but the older Save for Web dialog box is going to pop up, and we would choose the GIF file format. Um, I'm going to give it maximum colors here so I kind of have maximum quality. And you can see down here we have some animation options. Looping forever, we can just have it loop once, or you can choose uh, other, and you can set a certain number of play times. I'm just going to go with loop forever. Just loop infinitely. And then we're just going to save this. Uh, we'll save this as ship.gif and hit, OK, or hit save, excuse me. And Photoshop's going to take just a moment. You can see it actually saved it out pretty quickly because we made the file much smaller. Um, and let's, let's go to our desktop here. I'm going to go to my desktop and I am going to choose ship.gif. I'm actually going to right click on it and choose to open it with uh, Google Chrome. Pop it open in Google Chrome. There we go. We've got a working animating GIF file that we've taken from video. So essentially we've taken a video, we've added text to it, and we've exported it as a GIF file, which can be used wherever you want. Let's get back to Photoshop. So for taking video and converting it to an animation in Photoshop and exporting it either as video or as an animated GIF, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.